I'm not tired. I know you're thinking, James, how the hell can you be tired, man? You're just staying at home. As should you. But while you're home this spring, at least you should smell amazing, right? This, of course, is the best smelling channel on YouTube. Actually, hold on, let me check. Actually, yeah, not bad. Um, <laughs> I'm James from J Royal, and I do fragrance videos twice a week. If you like fragrances, or if you think you might like them after watching someone like me talk about them, then subscribe if you haven't already. And like the video at the end, because I'm sure you're gonna like this, at least a little bit. I have a decent amount of fragrances, and I don't always wear all of them every day. If you're new to fragrances, there are a ton that exist. It's not just Axe Body Spray, there's, there's all kinds of things. There's even fragrance companies that just make fragrances. They're called niche fragrance houses. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today, right now. The first fragrance that I look forward to wearing is, <laughs> wow, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this one. But it's true, I, uh, I can't wait to wear Office for Men this spring. And let me tell you why. I don't work in an office, I've never really worked, <sighs> Jesus. Okay. I don't work in an office. In fact, I don't think I've ever really ever worked in an office, but this fragrance does resonate with me quite nicely. And yes, it's technically a niche fragrance because fragrance one just makes fragrances, right? This, as far as I know, is based on a few designer releases. So it's kind of, yeah, it's niche, but is it though? For the sake of this video, yes it is because I think the quality is quite nice. It lasts a long time. It gets a lot of compliments from my fiance and it's just an easy fragrance to wear. So even in the niche side of things, you don't always want to be crazy, crazy unique and avant-garde. Sometimes you just want to wear something that's really, really good quality, smells really nice, easy to wear, universal appeal. And that's what this is. Kind of like a Parfums de Marly fragrance sort of thing. Not insanely different and out there and all these hand motions, but it smells great. And it lasts long and that's the first one. Next fragrance on this list, it wouldn't really be a J Royal spring list if I didn't talk about a green fragrance, especially from the house of zoologist and it's Panda this time around. Now I'm a huge fan of Elephant, which is another green zoologist fragrance, but I wanna reach for Panda this year a little bit more. And it's because of its really unique take on fruity apple. It's very, very strong as well. So you have a fruity fragrance that just has homage style performance, dude. I sprayed this on my hand one spray just to revisit it and man, it's like 10, 11 hours. Needless to say, easy on the trigger here, just because it's not just fruit, it has an animalistic quality to it. It's a little bit more dirty and musky and a bit masculine, but not in like an aqua di Gio type of way. It's an acquired taste, but the abundance of fruit makes this really nice in the air. I'd say this is one that I would reach for if I want to spend the day in my backyard and just get Really, really nice whiffs. Not necessarily one that I'll wear three sprays of and then just sit in my basement. Might be a bit much. And just to clarify, this is the second formulation of Panda. It was originally released with a more prominent sort of animalistic quality that turned a lot of people off. Now it's a little bit more wearable, but it's still very zoologist, which I like. I think it's a good thing. Speaking of fragrances that perform quite nice, it's Amouage Lyric Man. Well, normally Reflection Man seems to be a pretty popular choice for spring because it's fresh and powdery and light. But I look forward to wearing this because it has rose in it. And just like Lo Team in my designer list, which you can check out in the description down below, rose is a fragrance note that I like in the spring because it's one of the most iconic floral notes to my nose. When I think of florals, rose is one of the first ones that comes to my brain. And I also find it's quite romantic and classy too being a rose. What's nice about Lyric Man is the use of lime. So it's a citrus rose. Yes, it's sophisticated, but also signature scent worthy, performs really well. If you apply lightly, you can wear it when it's warmer outside. In fact, when I met up with Manny from Cascade Scents like a couple years ago, it was the high heat in the summertime and he was wearing Lyric Man. 
It smelled fantastic on him. So that got me thinking, why not wear this when it's getting warmer outside? But I also think it's great when it's cold outside. So that's why it's number three on this list, kind of in the middle, not ideal for a lot of situations, but it just works in most situations, if that makes sense. Okay, remember when I said there's a few fragrances that are quintessential spring fragrances? Well, this is the probably ultimate spring fragrance. It is Bleecker Street by Bond number no. nine. And I love this fragrance. It's sad though, because I don't wear it nearly as much as I want to. This is in the top echelon of my favorite fragrances in my collection. But for whatever reason, I've brainwashed myself and other reviewers have said that this is a spring fragrance only. I've also talked about that this is amazing in the summer and I do wear it in the summer, but now I'm gonna wear it how it's traditionally supposed to be worn in the springtime. In fact, I might make this my scent of the day. It's just such an uplifting fragrance. Some people say Bond number no. 9s are a bit synthetic and cheap smelling. Yes, it's a bit cheap smelling, but it's a nice cheap smell. It's a bit soapy, so it has a chemical feel to it, but it's a clean chemical feel. It's a feeling of cleanliness, which I do like, but also the green element balanced with the blueberry type of feel. And although the performance isn't incredible, it's respectable considering how it's composed. It's not a heavy fragrance by any stretch of the imagination. And if you've heard any rumors that this is just a knockoff of Creed's Green Irish Tweed, that couldn't be further from the truth. Although coincidentally, when I did buy my bottle of Green Irish Tweed, I was also given a 30 mil sample of this. I wore that sample way more than I wore the Green Irish Tweed bottle, which just goes to show you that this is a banger, but not quite the most anticipated spring niche fragrance for me in 2020. This last fragrance I'm gonna mention is one that I picked up on my trip to Florida. <laughs> I was originally introduced to this fragrance when I got a few samples from Beverly Hills Perfumery, and I ended up sampling the normal version of this, but I bought the more intensified version of it, just because intense is always better. <laughs> But as far as I know, and as far as I remember, the scents are very, very similar. Yes, there's a higher oil concentration in the Intensivo version, hint, hint, but the scent is quite similar. I love this fragrance, and it's because it's a rare scent style, in the sense that it's a fresh tobacco fragrance, which is a distinguishment that a lot of people don't make. They think of tobacco, they think of, you know, tobacco oud, very, very smoky winter fragrances, but fresh tobacco, it is quite fresh. It is a little more aromatic in nature with a bit of spiciness. And although this is a fragrance that you could wear year round, spring and fall are my favorite times to wear it. From the London-based house of Ormond Jane, I can't to wear, I can't to wear. My most anticipated spring niche fragrance is Mont Tobacco Intensivo. I know it's not all about compliments, guys, but this gets me a lot. And it gets me a lot while still being a niche fragrance through and through. It doesn't smell like anything else. It's not trying to be something else. It's not capitalizing on the success of another fragrance. It has its own identity and it smells so unique. My number one favorite Orm and Jane fragrance. Jeremy, what do you think? I like it a lot and I smelled it in a can and from the owner of the Beverly Hills Perfumery, which is a very prestigious perfumery in Beverly Hills and he smelled fantastic. It was the first time I ever smelled it on somebody. It's right in the line on being unique, yet mass appealing. If yeah. worn by the right guy, it will work fantastically. Now's the time to reach for this. If you haven't smelled this or the original Mont Tobacco, I encourage you to sample them because it's a really, really cool fragrance. The original Ormond Jane, Ormond Man, is probably the most popular men's fragrance from that line, but this is the one that really stood up to me. If you haven't seen the designer spring fragrance list, it's in the description down below. But if you wanna learn a little bit more about this guy, check it out right here. I did this video a little while back with less beardage and maybe I was a little more suntanned. In fact, I bet I was, missed those days. Um, anyway, see you in the next video.